In this bulletin, COVID-19 contact tracing effort heightened. Sudalpa ASG refutes Sir Ambuya's claim. And lack of financial officers a concern. The Ministry of Health has heightened its contact tracing effort following the recent COVID-19 border quarantine case announced yesterday. Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary says there is a possibility that the virus may have entered the community. Dr. Fong says over 267 people have been taken into quarantine, including 69 from the first generation contact tracing. He says the soldier who tested positive contracted the virus from two people who returned from India. He says they have to assume that the soldier had some contact with daytime workers at the quarantine facility and there is a serious risk that the virus could have entered the community. These individuals are all now in quarantine facilities where they will be quarantined for 14 days. So far, 56 out of the 69 first generation contacts have tested negative for the virus. 13 results are still being processed. Dr. Fong says tests are being conducted and more results are expected today. The Social Democratic Liberal Party General Secretary has refuted claims made by Linda Tambuya about the party's chances of losing a huge number of supporters from the Kandavu constituency. This was after the Kandavu representatives were not allowed to attend the management board meeting earlier this month. The party's management team is closely liaising with those on the island and a consensus will be reached soon. We've been in touch with the Honorable uh, Rasoba. He was uh, on the island. He's supposed to be coming in uh, today uh, with uh, an update of his progress, trying to get uh, our Kandavu constituency uh, in compliance with the requirements of our constitution. The lack of qualified financial officers to manage municipal council accounts is becoming a challenge. Local government minister Primal Kumar says majority of the municipal councils are struggling to put together their financial reports. Pranita Prakash reports. The ministry is concerned with non-performing financial officers being employed by the municipal councils. Because really if they were there and they did not do their job, then the question is should they continue to be there? because they failed to prepare the statements and, and, and submit um, the auditor's uh, reports. New measures have been implemented to prevent the backlog of financial reports. And we have uh, Ministry of Local Government, we have completed a new financial, financial manual for all 13 municipal councils. And we are working with the municipal councils in providing the training that they need. One of the municipal councils says that they are ensuring their accounts are updated. Our CEO is actually a qualified accountant and we do have another qualified accountant uh, in position as a financial manager. So it's just a matter of updating all the financial records which go back beyond before our time. Kumar says larger municipal councils have the resources. However, they are not putting in enough effort to get their accounts audited. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association is working closely with relevant government agencies in a bid for Fiji to join any travel bubble. Fiji's COVID-contained status has made it an ideal country to join a travel bubble with the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination and added boost. Fiji's ability to join a travel bubble soon is important for the tourism industry and we have met most of the requirements needed. Um, I think we have been able to prove that we've done our bit and that we can continue to do our bit, so you know, they should uh, include us. Having said that, though, I do understand the need to, to open up safely. There is an increasing number of elderly women at the Nosori market who are using their traditional fishing practices and skills to earn a living. Some of them are out at sea before sunrise to collect freshwater mussels, while others during dusk to catch prawns, crabs and mud lobsters. The struggle of catching these freshwater species normally go unnoticed, but for these women, it's their daily bread and butter. I have been selling mud lobsters here for seven years. It's been 
been a good business for my family and I. It helps with expenses at home. The boys in the village and I sometimes work together to catch this. 60-year-old Mariani Lilieta has been selling prawns at the market since she was 19. I use flour as my bait to catch these prawns. I go out in the evenings most of the time. It keeps me active and helps to put food on my table. I'm also able to do higher purchase just by selling here. Majority of these women are from Rewa and Tailevu areas. They've become breadwinners over the years and have been vendors all their lives. 58-year-old Kinisi Meritong Nivalu, who collects fresh water mussels, has been selling for over two decades. I am here around 5 a.m. It's not easy diving for these muscles. It's risky sometimes for someone like me because I am old, but I am still willing to provide for my family. Majority of the vendors at the Nosori market are women, and marketing in the informal sector has been a hobby for many of them. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Carbon dalo and sandalwood are becoming the fast-selling commodity for most farmers, particularly for the youth of Ovalau. FBC News recently visited a few villages in Ovalau and noted how the farmers are thriving despite the economic impacts posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Josin Anuga reports. These farmers who were once employed in urban centers are now investing in their piece of land to sustain them in these trying times. We have no problem. We have a piece of land and all we need to do is make use of it. We have invested a lot in Yangona, Dalo and Yasi, and we can't even feel a pinch of the pandemic because of our earnings. Youth for communities here in Levuka continue doing justice to the South Slovakia initiative aimed at consolidating the relationship between the Lotu, Vanua and relevant stakeholders. Unemployed female youth have also invested their time learning art and craft skills for commercial purposes. Yeah, we do have plans for the passing of the skills of weaving mats. Uh, so what we do is that uh, every time we weave our mats, we get to invite the young ones, if they could come and just uh, watch over us. So that's how they learn from us. A good number of these youth have returned to the village amidst the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic last year. Chosayen Anunga, FBC News. Up ahead, Buddha Level 6 exposure. Andra moves up to second on the ladder. Stay with us. Nandrunga rugby captain Manueli Ratunia Rawa believes the team will only get better in the coming Skipper Cup rounds. The Stellans reported its second win on Saturday, edging Namosi 29-28 after successfully defeating Suva in round one. Both the win came off late tries in the dying minutes. With their level next, Ratunia Rawa says they will take each game as it comes. We will take each game at a time. We don't want to rush or go ahead of ourselves. Right now we are focused on adding out those little mistakes that we made against Namusi and hopefully be better against the Lib. Buddha Levu Secondary School in Taviuni is fielding its biggest team yet to the 2021 Co Games in Suva. The team from Luvonivonu is looking forward to a good experience and some exposure. Eleanor Turangeviu has more. Buddha Level Secondary School is sending 28 athletes to the prestigious secondary school athletics competition, the Coke Games, this year. As far as I know, uh, this is, will be the biggest number for 2021. I usually we always take five every year. Buddha Level was recently crowned champions of the Tavioni Rambi Athletic Zone, the first in the school's history. Some of, uh, we are taking some of our students for experience, some are going for the first time. Uh, we are going for exposure. The team is confident of a good outing, with several athletes taking part for the second time now. It will be tough, but uh, I'll just do my best, just to try to represent the school. The 28-member team will take part in eight field and track events. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC Sports. Bar football suffered yet another loss in the Digital Premier League yesterday. The men in black went down to Rewa Nil 2 at Churchill Park in Lotoka. Tale Materikula has more. Fouls continue to be a problem for the Kamal Swami coached side. We shouldn't have given them uh, any fouls uh, in the defensive third because they're, they're, they're a good team in set pieces. We have seen them last season and they are still 
uh, rated as one of the best teams in the country. A change in attitude is needed. We can do even better if we if we get our eggs right and uh, the attitude towards uh, winning is correct, then, then we can surely win games. Rewa stuck to the game plan and reaped the rewards. We knew coming here by the top team and they will play and count us in every opportunity they get. But we stuck to the game plan. The boys did very well uh, managing the hit, managing the counter attack. In other DPL matches, Nabua held a 92 2 draw. Lambasa defeated Suba 1 0, and Lotoka edged Nandranga 1 0. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Roger Tuivasa Shek willed the Warriors to a 2014 controversial win against the Dragons. This is after opposing fullback Matt Tufty. Dufty rather, looked like he'd scored the match winner. Netstrata, Jubilee Stadium, Norman Brickhand, Dufty, again from Bird, out to Ramsey and Cable. Of the field. Egan for Harris, tall the line, then the kick, Dufty has it covered. I don't think Dufty grounded the ball. Ten out, here's Dufty, Dufty, long run, Lara, no room. No to the line, the grabber, Dufty's there, Dufty! Seven. Finds Nikarima now, two of us, the check, beats one, still going! Run. Nikarima approaches the penalty and nails it. And apart from isolated afternoon showers, moderate southeast winds, moderate sea breeze during the day. That's FBC Morning News. Join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj. Take care and good morning.